So, good afternoon, my dear students. Uh, to start the class. <coughs> See, in the last class, uh, I was discussing regarding the, the hydraulic motor. So, we discussed uh, uh, what is the basic principle behind uh, the working of a hydraulic motor. And also, we discussed uh, three different types of hydraulic motor the so gear motor, wheel motor, and the piston motor. And also, we discussed what are the different uh, uh, sorry, what are the principles behind the each of these uh, motor, uh, uh, hydraulic motors? And also, we discussed the same the different types of uh, piston motors. I think when I just uh, went out of the class in the last one, so where we are just discussing with respect to the calculation part. Okay, so here I was just think that this was the last uh, slide I think I was discussing in the last class. So, this is uh, the <coughs> Uh, expression what we use it for calculating the theoretical torque capacity of a hydraulic motor. Okay, so this is the expression here. So we will have much more uh, uh, clear way of doing the calculation. I will just going to show it. Here. Okay, so motor calculations will go to happens like this. So here we have a theoretical discharge which we can calculate by volumetric uh, displacement into a speed in RPM divided by 60. The expression would be Q theoretical is equal to the volumetric discharge into the speed, that is the number of RPM, speed in RPM divided by 60. You will go to get a theoretical discharge. Okay, so those unit will be in the meter cube per second. Okay, then actual discharge. How do you calculate actual discharge? Actual discharge you can calculate by power input to the power output. So power output, you know, output uh, input to the output. So input is here. Uh, power is the input and the pressure. So based upon this, we can easily calculate what is the actual discharge. Q actual is equal to the power input to the pressure. So now, once you get the theoretical discharge and the actual discharge, so you can calculate what is the volumetric efficiency. So where volumetric efficiency is the ratio of uh, theoretical discharge into the actual discharge. So when you want to put it in the percentage, so you can uh, put it down to by 100, you are going to get it in the Percentage. So, therefore, volumetric efficiency is equal to Q theoretical by Q actual, so where Q theoretical and Q actual can be determined from these two expressions. Okay? <coughs> that is one important thing. So, when it comes for a hydraulic motors, the volumetric efficiency is the most important parameter that you can calculate by using this expression. Next comes the actual torque. So, how to calculate the actual torque? which is the power output divided by 2 pi into 10. It is 60 into power output divided by 2 pi into the speed. That is, speed we call it as 10. So from this, you can easily calculate what is the actual torque. Next comes theoretical torque. So how to get a theoretical torque? So this is the expression what we were talking in the previous slides. Theoretical torque is the volumetric displacement into pressure divided by 2 pi. So using this, you can easily calculate what is the volumetric displacement, sorry, uh, theoretical torque. So that is expression is theoretical, uh, T theoretical is equal to volumetric displacement into pressure divided by 2 pi will go to give the theoretical torque in Newton meter. So once you get a theoretical torque and actual torque, we can calculate the mechanical efficiency. So where mechanical efficiency is the ratio of actual torque to the theoretical torque. Okay, so we have got expression here in uh, data mechanical is T, uh, T actual by T derivative. Then power output, so how to calculate the power output here? The power output you can calculate by 2 pi into speed into RPM into actual. So this is what uh, we can calculate the power what it is been uh, uh, output. So this is the expression for calculating the power output and power input pressure into actual distance. So overall efficiency we can calculate by power output by power input. Okay. So theoretical power. So theoretical power you can calculate by using P into pressure into theoretical discharge. So this is how we can uh, easily calculate the overall uh, theoretical power and actual efficiency. So this is how the most important parameters here is how to calculate the uh, volumetric efficiency. Second one is uh, the mechanical efficiency 
and third one is the overall efficiency because when you just say air motor so all these three efficiencies are very very important so correspondingly to calculate or to determine these efficiencies so what are the parameters that needs to be determined so these are the formulas what we are having so motor calculations okay so <clears throat> they have specified any problems here but still uh, they have given the calculations here so you see it's possible to solve one of these problems from here okay so this is what uh, the calculations regarding uh, the hydraulic motors okay so please remember this formula okay so because uh, units and everything is very important here because uh, changing the units uh, is uh, very important getting the correct one okay so please remember this formula and then now uh, you all the problems you can do to get the uh, use the go to use this kind of formula, right now let us move on to the second type of motor one we call it as a pneumatic motor or we call it as a air motor or a compressed air engine all are one and the same so different different names we have given so we have to discuss one is the hydraulic motor we discussed in the morning class now we we'll go to start with a pneumatic motor a pneumatic motor or a air motor or a compressed air engine all are one and the same is a type of a motor which does mechanical work by expanding compressed so the basic uh, principle or working principle of a pneumatic motor is the expansion of a compressed air in the sense when the compressed air expands it does the mechanical work so pneumatic motors generally converts the compressed air energy to mechanical work through either linear or rotary motion so in the sense so the motors may be of two types so this is a linear motion uh, pneumatic motors or rotary type of uh, pneumatic motors the conversion of uh, compressed air energy into mechanical work either it by be a linear or by to rotary motion linear motion can come from either a diaphragm or a piston actuator while the rotary motion is supplied by either a wheel type air motor or a piston air motor or air turbine or a gear type motor so this is the different uh, types of motors what we are having so how uh, linear uh, motion can be obtained and how rotary motion can be obtained. so linear motion can come from either a diaphragm or a piston actuator piston as a precipitate either or by rotary motion uh, the rotary motion is supplied either by a wheel or a piston or a air turbine or a gear type motor so we will go to discuss these things one by one next comes the classification so here uh, broadly it has been classified into two types based upon uh, the type of uh, motion it going to be used for converting the compressed air energy to the mechanical work one is called a linear and the other one is called a rotary okay let us discuss what is this linear type of uh, uh, air motors or uh, uh, pneumatic motors in order to achieve linear motion from compressed air a system of pistons is most commonly used the compressed air is fed into the air tight chamber that houses the shaft of the piston also inside this chamber a spring is coiled around the shaft of the piston in order to hold the chamber completely open when air is not being pumped into the chamber so here uh in order to obtain the linear motion so we use a system of pistons so in this case what we do here is uh we have a air tight chamber this air tight chamber will uh, uh, houses the shaft of the piston so compressed air will be fed into this uh, air tight chamber okay and also inside the chamber there is a spring is coiled around the shaft of the piston in order to hold the chamber completely open when the air is not being pumped into the chamber when the air is not being pumped in, so the piston piston which is coil which is going to hold or it will going to keep keep uh, the chamber open as the fair air is fed into the chamber the force on the piston shaft begins to overcome the force being exerted on the spring as uh, the more air is fed into the chamber the pressure increases and the piston begins to move down the chamber when it reaches its maximum length the air pressure is reduced 
from the chamber and the spring completes the completes the cycle by closing of the chamber to return to its normal position. This is the basic uh, principle behind the linear type of uh, air motors. When it comes to air rotary type rotary vane motors, so this in this type of uh, motors we have uh, rotary uh, pneumatic motor known as rotary vane motor where it uses air produced produce a rot rotational motion of the shaft. The rotating element is a slotted rotor which is mounted on the driver shaft. Each slot on the rotor is fitted with freely sliding rectangular vane. The vanes are extended to the housing walls using springs, cam action or air pressure depending on the motor design. Air is pumped through the motor input which pushes the vanes creating the rotational motion of the central shaft. This is a very simple uh, concept here. So here we have a rotating element which is in the form of a slotted rotor. And this slotted rotor is mounted on the driver shaft. And each slot of the rotor is being uh, fitted with uh, the vanes which can slide. So how we discussed in the previous uh, hydraulic motors. So vane type of hydraulic motor similar here. So vanes which can slide within the slots of the rotor. The vanes are extended to the housing walls using springs or cam action or air pressure depending on the mode design. Same thing what we discussed for uh, uh, a vane type of uh, hydraulic motor, the same thing over here. Air is pumped through the motor input which pushes the vanes creating the rotational motion of the central shaft. Same principle here. So here, the rotational speed vary between 100 to 25,000 RPM depending on the several factors which include the amount of air pressure at the motor inlet and the diameter of the motor. So types of uh, air motors. So we have uh, vane motors, piston type, turbine motors and gear rotor. Gear rotor. So we will go to discuss this one by one, right? <clears throat> what is uh, rotary vane motors? So this type of uh, motors are used in applications requiring low to medium power output. In the sense, when we want to obtain only the uh, medium to power out, low to medium power outputs, so we can use uh, this rotor vane type of motors. They are uh, very simple in construction, and of course, they are very compact. And uh, they most often drive portable drive tools but uh, certainly are used for post of mixing, uh, driving, turning and pulling application as portable power or just like uh, how we use uh, your drilling machine, hand drilling machine. Okay, so this type of uh, wind motors are used for portable power tools, but certainly are used in uh, a post of mixing, driving, turning and pulling application. The vanes are biased to seal against the housing interior wall by springs, cam action, or air pressure depending on the situation. So, the sealing of the vanes with respect to the housing, interior wall of the housing, either might be through springs or might be through cam action or even by air pressure. So, different, different uh, uh, designs will have used different, different mechanisms for uh, sealing the vanes with respect to the interior walls of the house. The centrifugal force that develops when the motor turns aids the sealing action. So centrifugal force, when the rotor starts rotating, the centrifugal force will be developed and this force will turn which aids the sealing action of this. Torque develops from pressure acting on one side of the vein. Torque at the output shaft is proportional to the exposed vein area, the pressure and the moment torque to which the pressure Let us start with the vane motors. In the slot, there are uh, 3 to 10 vanes. To enable the vanes to come out of the slots, they are designed with a compression spring or a pressure air. For motors equipped with the even number of vanes connecting pin links, diagrammatically, diametrically opposite vanes, so that the bore surface pushes one vane in and pin pushes the other. So in the sense, what it says here is, when the when there are even number of vanes, the 
connecting pin links which are a diametrically opposite to the waves so that the bore surface pushes one way whereas the pin pushes the other way so when you have even number of pins but leakage portability will be there when the vane tip wears out when motor runs from 100 to 25000 rpm so this is the diagram of a vane motor so you can see over here so this is the inlet this is the casing actually the casing or housing what we call it as okay so then we have a vanes these are called vanes vanes and exactly center we have a shaft and this is the rotor this is the rotor and these vanes these vanes so we can we are showing the springs of springs of there we can see the springs okay compressed springs will be there so <clears throat> when the air is been passed through this okay so this air will be circulated across the surface of the vanes which causes the movement of the vanes or which can slides which causes so this is the red color what you are showing here see the red color this is the operating or system pressure okay and blue color what it is showing it is the exhaust flow so after performing a work so this will passes through so where uh, the hydraulic pressure is gets converted into air pressure it gets converted into a mechanical work the compressed air energy uh, the compressed air as it passes through the uh, compressed air will starts expanding expansion means by expanding it does a work so the expansion takes place as it passes through the veins okay so this expansion will results in the results in doing a work on the veins and these veins will start rotating so once this starts rotating the rotor which in connection with the veins they will also start rotating and these rotors are mounted on the driver shaft and the driver shaft will start behind the working of a vane motor okay so the compressed air energy as it enters the vanes it starts expanding expansion always results in doing a work so this work will be done on the vanes and vanes will starts moving once it uh, once the compressed air increases so and as it expands it does a work on the vanes and vanes starts rotating the vanes are connected to the rotor and in which in turn rotor is connected to the shaft once the vane starts rotating therefore the driver shaft will start rotating so the centrifugal force which will be developed once it start rotating because it can operate at 100 to 25000 rpm so because of very high uh, rpm so the centrifugal force will be developed and these centrifugal forces will make that vanes to windy get sealed with respect to the area sorry with respect to the house this is the basic principle of uh, the vane motor next comes the piston type of motors so in piston type uh, we use are used in the applications where requiring a very high pressure high starting torque and accurate speed control at low speeds they have either two three four five or six cylinders arranged either axially or radially within a house so when we want to have uh, require very high power or uh, high stocking torque and accurate speed control at low speeds so we have to use the piston air motor this type of uh, air motors can con can consist of uh, two three four five or six cylinders so through which uh, inside which the pistons will reciprocate and these cylinders either be arranged axially one to one or it may be connected radially within the house the output torque is developed by pressure acting on the pistons that reciprocate within the fluid same thing how uh, as the compressed air passes or a compressed air uh, is being fed to the piston uh, as it expands it does a work on the piston and piston will start rotating power developed by the piston motor depends on the inlet pressure the number of pistons and the piston area stroke and the air so so when you want to calculate what is the power developed by the piston type of air motors 
So we had to consider the inlet pressure, how many number of pistons it is having, and what is the area of the piston, and what is the stroke in, and at what speed it is in operation. Radial and axial piston motors have one significant limitation. They are internally lubricated, so oil and grease supplies must be checked periodically and replenished. In the sense, uh, because of the more number of reciprocating parts, and uh, these uh, parts require uh, this lubrication. So therefore, so when uh, piston type is uh, used, so it is uh, very much necessary for us to check uh, uh, the oil and grease periodically. And also if there is any uh, shortage of the oil in terms or uh, grease in terms, we need to so first we'll start with the radial type of piston motors. It is a robust oil lubricated construction and are well suited for continuous operation. They have highest starting torque of any air motor and are particularly beneficial for applications involving high starting. Overlapping power impulse provides a smooth torque in both forward and reverse direction. The size ranges from uh, 35 HP horsepower for speeds to 4500 RPM. This is a radial type of piston motor. Axial piston motors, they are more uh, compact than the radial piston motors, making them ideal for mounting in a close quarters. Their designs are simple or more simple, complex and costly than the wheel motor and are uh, grease lubricated. However, axial piston motors run smoother and deliver maximum power at much lower speed than the vane motors can. Axial piston motors are tolerate high ambient temperature. The maximum size is up to 3 to 1 by 4 here. The axial types are uh, very compact in comparison with the uh, radial type of piston motors. And uh, their design is a little bit complex and of course costly because it requires uh, uh, frequent lubrication, con constant lubrication. And uh, because of uh, its smoother action and it can deliver maximum power at much uh, lower speeds. And uh, they can tolerate a very high ambient temperatures and it can be operated at a very highest temperature possible. So this is uh, the diagram of uh, the piston type. Piston type here. So here we have a transfer port, exhaust port. It is just like a uh, two-stroke engine we are having here. Ports we are having. So air is being fed inside here. Okay, air is fed inside, and uh, as it passes through the piston, so air will enter. This is a transfer. Port. This is the inlet port and this is the transfer port. So the compressed air as it passes over here, okay, and it is being fed to the cylinder where the piston is going to the tip of the piston. Okay, so this compressed air as it expands and it pushes the piston, means it will just work on the piston. Okay, so as it does on piston, the work on the piston, the piston will start moving. And as the movement of the piston will be converted into a mechanical work. This is the basic principle of uh, a compressed air engine. <coughs> Where uh, uh, the expansion of a compressed air uh, does a work on the piston. Uh, and uh, that work, the movement of the piston will be stored in the form of a mechanical work, which, which in turn is uh, uh, results in the movement of the rotor, the movement of the uh, crank or the crankshaft or the crankshaft to rotor. So that is what uh, the basic principle behind a compressed engine. Same thing over here. Okay. So once the air does an expansion or does a work, and it will be passed as the piston moves downward. Okay. So do, uh, by doing a work, so all this air will pass through this exhaust. Okay. So this is uh, the basic, so you can, anybody can uh, easily understand uh, what is this, uh, this uh, piston type of motors or compressed air motors. Next comes the turbine motors. This type of motors 
converts low velocity high pressure air to a high velocity low pressure air by passing it through metering mass. It's just like a turbine. So where uh, high velocity, uh, sorry, low velocity and high pressure air gets converted into a high velocity low pressure. Major advantage of this is that there is no rubbing or sliding contact between the rotating parts and the body cavity. So no relative motion exists between uh, the moving parts over here or rotating parts over here. So therefore, uh, possibility of rubbing or possibility of lubrication is uh, very much less in this case. It is one of the major advantages of this type of and uh, this reduces wear and lubrication. Air is not required to clean the lubricant problem. Okay. Application is uh, advisable only in low ambient temperature because of the lubricant problem. These are high speed low torque motor for same volume of air than the piston. In the sense, uh, this kind of motors will uh, provide a low torque at a higher speed for the same volume of air with the Next comes gear water. Gear water type motors are mostly used for low RPM pressure applications such as 20 to 30 RPM. Hence, they may not be suitable for high torque application. So here, this is just like a this spider type of wheels uh, wheels you can see over here. Okay, so we can uh, represent. Uh, yeah, we can the schematic representation or diagrammatic representation of gear rotor will be in this case. So these are the one what we supposed to remember here. So gear rotor, what is here? Here is this is the inlet section. Okay, and this is the internal tube here. Outlet and input shaft or a driver shaft it is here. Okay, so as the air enters over here, the same process how we discussed for uh, the hydraulic pump. So because of a high uh, compressed energy, compressed air, the energy what it has been stored in the air. So as it passes through this, uh, what we call it as the gates. It is an internal tube gear. So this internal to the tube gear will be mounted on the driver shaft, okay? And the input shaft, what we call driver shaft, sorry, uh, driver shaft, sorry, driver shaft, and they will go to start rotating. So the rotation of this uh, uh, input shaft or driver shaft will comes through the expansion of the compressed air as it passes through the internal gear system, okay? So same principle how we discussed for the previous uh, uh, type of uh, air motors here also the as the compressed air passes or compressed air starts expanding so the expansion of this compressed air will cause this part as a work so that the work will be will be in the form of the rotation of the internal tube or internal tube gear. this internal tube gear is mounted on the output shaft and the output will, uh, the gear, driven shaft driven uh, uh, input shaft and the input shaft will start rotating. So there are two, one is a uh, driver, show, driver gear, and the other one is a driven gear. You can see here, so how they will go to operate. So once the air does the work after expanding, so that the uh, air will comes out of, uh, through the chamber, comes out of the cylinder to the outlet. This is what we are showing over here. So how the air is coming out. This is the outlet of a, gear rotor, this is the inlet of a gear rotor. This is the movement of uh, the gears. Got it? Yeah. The next comes is advantages of air motors. So these air motors can be a, a variable speed. So we can vary the speed over here. It can uh, easy to use. So the usage is very uh, very simple and very easy to use over here, and it is low weight, inexpensive, it's all without uh, damage, perfect for conditions where the motor works in stall conditions. 
runs through, especially in uh, overload condition, explosion proof, and instantaneously reverse, except when specifically noted. In the sense, when you look at these advantages compared to the hydraulic motor, the air motors are uh, more preferred. So, because uh, there are wide range of uh, these you can have, and this type of type of motors are very easy to use. And moreover, they are uh, contributing to the lesser weight, so it can be easy, it can be portable. You can uh, take it to anywhere. That's what we are talking about portable uh, machines. We can use it here when we get the application here. So we can use it for. Uh, Portable type of uh, uh, drilling machine, uh, turning machine, whatever it might be, and they are well, they are inexpensive. It does not cost more, and uh, it is it will stall without any damages. Okay, and it runs cool, especially when uh, it is overloaded condition. So most of the motors or most of the motors does not. Runs so it gets heated up. But uh, this is uh, it involves a little bit of lubrication. So generally, uh, it will uh, control the heating capacity and it will run very cool without any much uh, temperature and without any much noise. Okay. And also, they are explosion proof and instantaneously reverses except when specifically moved. So these are all some of the advantages of. Uh, Air Next comes the applications of air motors. So generally, these air motors are used in construction engineering. So just like uh, constructing a building or uh, anything. So generally, we can need this type of uh, whether you want to do drilling or whether you want to do uh, assembling. So these are the power tools. It's a just like a, a portable power tools we can use it as. And of course, the second one, what is the hand tools? The hand tools we can use. And moreover, they are used in uh, mining engineering. So, where uh, we have the gold mines or uh, iron or iron mines, or just where you want the mining industries or mining engineering, they can use it. And next comes uh, woodworking fields. So, when you want to have wood turning or carpentry, whatever it might be, so there also they use a kind of uh, air motors and uh, mechanical applications like hammering, riveting, and drilling. So it's the most uh, important application of these air motors. And we have indoor manufacturing plants, mobile and portable equipment at sea and on land. So that's what the mobility because of its uh, uh, lesser in weight. So it is more portable, and uh, we can port uh, these equipment at either on the sea or on the sea or on the land also. And uh, manufacturing indoor plants, so very uh, indoor plants we need to manufacture. So we can use for using the air motors, non-electrical for hazardous locations. So they are uh, not conducted electricity. So it will say in locations when it is hazardous for uh, electrical, then uh, it does not uh, undergo any uh, electrical uh, accidents here. So therefore, it is non hazardous. Emergency backup to electric motors for critical operation. So it can have uh, uh, emergency backup. So it might be what for uh, any critical operations if you want to do. So you can have uh, the uh, emergency backup and then also remote or underwater activities. Even uh, under the water, also, we can use uh, under the remote conditions where the generally the other equipment cannot be used. There, also, we can uh, use this kind of air okay. motors. So, <clears throat> there are quite a number of applications we can use. I think you might be uh, in this type of air motors. Uh, These are all some of the applications of electricity. Okay. So 
I will stop at this point today. If you have any clarifications, you can have. No, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the students today you have a uh, quiz at uh, 9 o'clock on additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing. Please attend that. The syllabus I have you already posted. It is uh, module one completely that uh, rapid prototyping technique. And second one is uh, the polymers. The module three, I have taken only polymers as one, and we have that. So anything to ask or any clarification, so please attend the test today at 9 to 10. It is a multiple choice questions. Prepare well and attend the quiz. It is a compulsory for everybody. Everybody should attend this. Okay, guys, all the best for the test to do well. Okay, we'll meet tomorrow for the class. Thank you very much.